Good afternoon, everyone, and um, welcome to this afternoon's um, um, short webinar on Autodesk AutoCAD 360 Pro. Um, just before we start, can I just ask people just to raise their hands if they can hear me, please? Cool, excellent. There's some hands going up, so at least you can hear me. That's good. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, as I say, we're going to talk about the, the AutoCAD 360 Pro. Pro app. Um, this is AutoCAD's official mobile app um, and it's quite a powerful little app as well and we'll go through some of the features um, that it actually offers us as we go, as we go through this webinar. So um, first things first, uh, a little bit about me, just an introduction to me. My name is Simon Dickinson. I'm the BIM technical manager here at Greytech. Um, I've been using CAD for um, a long time now and, and I, I'm, those of you that know me know that my, my main product I look after is Revit, but even then I, I still relate back to, to using AutoCAD ever so often as well. Okay. So what actually is AutoCAD 360 Pro and who really is it for? So as I mentioned before, AutoCAD 360 Pro is a mobile app. Now the one thing that's really nice about this mobile app is it isn't just designed to run on an iPad even though that's what I will be running it on this afternoon. You can run this on your phone, whether that's an Android phone or an Apple phone and the same with the tablets, you can, it'll run on an Android tablet as well. It doesn't currently run on Windows phones um, but it does run on the Android ones which is very very powerful. So it's a powerful mobile app for CAD and it provides essential tools you're not going to find every single tool that you have in AutoCAD in here. You're not going to have things like that being able to download um, Google Earth imagery and the Google Maps. You're not going to be able to use powerful array tools. It's more to give you the essential tools for editing or creating information on the go, which we can then enhance through AutoCAD later on when we get back to the office. So we can view we can edit, we can create, and we can share our drawings as well. So even if you've created your drawing on, on, on the app, you can actually share it with people outside of your A360 drive. So all the work that we do will be stored in our A360 space, but it does allow us then to share our drawings externally to either other people within our organization on their A360 drive um, or um, a, a, across multiple disciplines and multiple organizations. It's very quick and easy to share updates. Um, the whole concept is that we can use drawings either online or offline, so we can make changes. Them changes can happen instantly. It'll synchronize back with the, um, the drawings in the office that someone else could be then accessing later on that have got our updates, our notes, our red lines almost, etc. on there. Okay. So it uses <coughs> A360. So we'll be storing our, our, our mock drawings, if you like, in the cloud, but it allows us to take them drawings out onto site. Um, we can mark up, we can measure. There's some really cool measuring tools, and I'll show you them later on. And basically, we can get the updated drawings back into AutoCAD in, as soon as we get back into the office. Or even if you've got um, a mobile connection on your iPad or your, your tablet, maybe you're connecting it via your phone or you're using it on your phone, um, then them changes can be synchronized very very rapidly so who benefits anyone that's using AutoCAD basically so it doesn't matter what your discipline is if you need access to AutoCAD drawings and you need to be able to modify them if you don't need to modify them then you can simply use the A360 app because the A360 app is a viewer um, but if you need to sort of look at maybe modifying it or just reviewing a DWG um, to add some dimensions or even just measure off of them, then this app really is a powerful piece of kit. There's all sorts of um, business benefits um, for the use in this app. It does bridge the gap between the office and the field. So rather than us dragging our drawings around, scribbling on the drawings, fetching them back and having to make the changes afterwards, we don't need to worry about that. The other advantage we've got is if we are out and about in the field, because we've got it linked to the A360 drive, we can access these draw drawings um, and make sure we've got the most up to date. It may be that someone in the office is still working on a, a particular drawing for us. Um, when we leave the office, it doesn't matter. We can get the most up to date information out there in the field. Yeah, It works with both AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT because at the end of the day, it is just using the... Um, the, the, the cloud space and of course there's no manual transfer from paper 
or other software back so we're not using something else to to maybe mark it up only to have to redraw it again when we get back to the office cloud storage is obviously free depending on how much subscription you've got you get more space but it will also allow you to use Google Drive Dropbox OneDrive and Box so it's not just limited to the A360 storage we can actually utilize them as well and the advantage of using obviously the Autodesk cloud storage is it does give us um, the better updating so the synchronization is a lot better through them as well um, so improved team collaboration as well because you know we, we're working together as a team you could almost be drawing something over the top of somebody else's drawing um, the other people can then look at that so we're actually collaborating and using AutoCAD then as a, as a collaborative tool as well um, the fact that we can also if you don't you might be on site inside a building maybe you, you, you're limited to um, the internet connection where you are then we can actually work offline so you can fetch that drawing offline um, and then we can synchronize later so we can actually take it completely offline you could be working on an airplane when you get to the other end reconnect to the internet it's going to resynchronize the changes that you've made as well um, and it's this good old idea of going paperless so we can leave the printed drawings at the office um, and view or edit the mobile device on the job site we can also create brand new drawings within the app as well so we don't have to start with a drawing we can actually start with a drawing um, totally from scratch um, within the app so top features the ability to draw yeah um, you're not going to get every option in there so there's no polygon tool it's a little bit more awkward but we do have various touch gestures that we can use if you're using a stylus on you on your device as well it'll support the design um, the stylus and just to, to allow us to draw shapes the object snaps are all in there so it helps us to, to, to draw in there we can then come in we can edit so there's a, a move rotate we can scale objects we can manage layers so we can actually create additional layers in these drawings as well so we've got all the controls over the layers we've got measure tools these, these two se um, separate tools for measure we've got a standard measure tool and then we've got an auto measure which I'll show you in a bit as well um, so we can actually start to put dimensions in our drawings of course we can view we can navigate around and one of the other features that we've got is if you've got a device that's got GPS locator in it you can actually GPS locate your model so we can actually have that as OS grid um, or we could set a GPS location in there so that when we're actually on site we can actually be stood where we would be um, in that drawing so we can actually orientate ourselves actually within that drawing We've of course got annotation tools we've got the ability to do markups directly on the drawings add comments we can also pull photos in as well and, and attach photos to the DWG so that could be just using the camera on the device itself but it will allow us to actually pull that information directly in and then we can share so we can actually share them straight away so directly from a device we can plot the design straight to PDF and then email them or we can actually share the actual drawing itself um, and there's also a design feed in there as well where we can start to put comments that's in, that are also embedded within the within the model okay um, mentioned about the external storage so there's an example um, on the uh, graphic of where we can store it including things like Autodesk bus store as well but if you've got the app installed the, the connected storage it will then list that within the list there's, there's other ones that are included as well we can also then when we go to share we've got the ability to share that as a collaborative drawing so if you share it obviously as a collaborative other people can actually modify it but you can also share it as a review only if you share it as a review only it's an uneditable file format so we can share that directly from our, uh, our device share that out onto the internet um, with other people by that email address they can then work on it again in, in, in in AutoCAD 360 but they could only maybe review it so we can only put dimensions on uh, but they can't actually add any design data in there I mentioned about being at this idea of orienting with GPS it is actually possible as well to use the GPS to actually almost walk around the drawing so we can actually then have a perspective view um, of the 2d drawing and we can actually then walk around utilizing this, this the, the GPS within our devices work offline 
very very powerful feature to be able to download them drawings and take them anywhere work on them and push them back afterwards as soon as we get an internet connection we also have one of my favorite tools which is the smart pen tool so there's a few quick tools and, and one of my favorite ones is a smart one obviously trying to draw circles you know it could be quite awkward if it will detect but what you're trying to draw is a circle and it will then just give you the option of then of setting a dimension if we draw a rectangle we can simply draw a rectangle it will then give me the dimensions to say right what's your length and your depth of this rectangle so this very easy and we have an on-screen input to actually be able to put that in as well okay so there's a few people um, out there that are using it at the moment so architects very much using it on a daily basis we've got a few customers that are actually using this to take the drawings out it's also a really good presentation tool uh, being able to take them drawings out and show them to, to the client very powerful um, so we've got the engineers again using that GPS integration for the orientation the construction professionals this is really useful because we can almost make sure they can check that they've got if they are printing drawings that they've got the most up-to-date drawings or if there is an update we can basically give them a call and say look there's a new drawing available have a look we've changed that slightly but you're getting that information to the site and to their devices very very quickly so how much does it cost and what versions have it? There's actually three versions um, of it. We've actually got a basic one, uh, which is free of charge, so you can you can download it. They will automatically give you five gigabyte of storage because if you just sign up for an Autodesk account, that's what you get. So you will automatically get five gigabytes of, of storage. Um, maximum file size though that you can open, it'll let you open a DWG that's 10 meg. You can view the drawings, you can measure, there's a bit of file management in there so we can see how the files are actually working. We then have the pro version. Um, it's £40 a year, so not a lot of money. Um, you can get this through the App Store, but it works out a little bit more expensive. If you come through us, um, it, it, it's, it, it's not going to be, it, it's a small business discount on that. You get more storage, so you get your 25 gig, similar to what you would get if you had any other subscription with us. Um, maximum file size of drawings 30 meg in addition to the tools that you get with basic you're going to get the drawing the creating drawings annotation layer objects the blocks and you also get priority support um, if you want to go to the next level up the main reason you would go to the pro plus purely for the amount of storage that's available so it's 85 pound a year um, but you get four times the amount of storage and also we we get an increase in the file size that we can actually open as well okay so let's have a let's have a look um, oh one more other thing before we have a look at it there is actually iPad Pro compatibility so we've got support for the the features with the smart pen um, so it gives us a, there's a new on-screen keyboard for accurate drawing um, fully supported for the um, pressure sensitive Apple pencil um, so we can actually work in split screen mode so there's a few additional functionality and it'll also utilize the fast GPU performance on the large files um, it's also changed slightly for the, the retina display but the main feature is it's to support for the the pen on the iPad Pro okay so let's have a look at how it all works what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to start out um, with an existing drawing so starting out normal normal AutoCAD um, we can open a drawing and the first thing that I want to do is when I go to save so I'm just going to do a save as I can save this drawing directly to the cloud so I can save this drawing straight into my um, 360 account I've got a folder called AutoCAD 360 that's actually got a few DWGs in and I'm just going to hit save okay so that's going to save that up to the cloud into my cloud storage space if I am um, basically hover over that now it should be telling me that what it's done is it saved it into my local shared folder for the AC A360 drive and then it will be updating that um, if I want I could just double check that that has actually up uploaded that I can go into my A360 desktop app I can come into here yeah and we can actually see here's the drawing that I've just uploaded it's got a tick next to it so I know it's actually synchronized with the cloud okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna launch 
the application on my iPad. So just bear with me a second, just so that I can synchronize my screen. So hopefully in a second, my iPad will pop up on your screens. He says, there we go. So a little bit of a little bit of a delay. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see that. Let me just double check that you can see that. Excellent. So into my Autodesk apps, and on my Autodesk app here, I've got my AutoCAD 360. Okay, so this is the um, AutoCAD 360 Pro. Uh, it's not the Pro Plus. I don't need the extra storage, and I can come into here, and we've now got all the drawings that have that I've currently uploaded, and here is my office plan .dwg. Yeah, um, depending on the files, the size of the drawing, and obviously which version of the iPad you've got, it will depend on how long it takes to, to, to load it. It does create a local copy of it as well, so currently it's just uploading this, so depending on the your internet speed, there we go. So, here we have now um, our AutoCAD drawing that I uploaded a few moments ago, sat here quite comf comfortably in the cloud okay and as you can see from the bottom at the bottom of my screen I've got a few tools so I've got the ability to do some quick tools so I've got a quick measure notice at the moment I've got a lot of grayed out icons the reason that these icons are grayed out is because currently I cannot edit this I'm in review only mode yeah um, and if I actually go to sort of like do blocks it's going to tell me as a reviewer I can't see it the reason it's in review only mode is because I've made a, a fundamental flaw and I forgot to shut AutoCAD down so basically in the background here, AutoCAD's still got this as read only. So what I need to do is I need to close down that drawing. Okay. Um, what I can then do is so I, I can then come back out of that drawing, go back in. It'll re it should be quicker to open this time, because it's now got its its, its local version. Um, but when it opens back up, hopefully this time I will actually have access to it. There we go. But if you ever find that the drawing's not going to let you edit it, it's purely and simply because you've left it open. So it basically would open a read-only copy. Assuming it doesn't actually say read-only, it does think that what you've actually got is simply a um, a version of it that's in review only. Okay. So wait for this to open. There we go. I do love the fact that it gets to about gets stuck and then flies to a. 100. So now if you notice that the tools at the bottom are not grayed out, I could actually come in around here. I could go select. I could select that object there um, and it understands that as a block. Um, we can actually find out if there's any blocks in this drawing. So as you can see there, there's, there's a few blocks that are set up already in there. These are the blocks that have already been put in the drawing. I can drag and drop these in. Um, I've got my layers. So you can actually see the layer control in this drawing as well. So any layers, I can also then start to create new layers in this dialog box. Um, so maybe I wanted a, um, a kitchen layer. Oops, get rid of layer one. So let's call that kitchen. Yeah. So I can create a new layer. That will actually create that layer in there. Assigning colors to objects is simply a case of changing the color afterwards so I can actually come in and adjust the colors of any objects afterwards so we can start to to color code this um, most of the items in this are probably drawn on layer one but we could start to move them around as well so to start with let's look at sort of some of the review tools um, so I can come in I could start to use my measure tool I could actually start to just look at reviewing that and we can drag a drop it gives me a little zoom window so I can actually see that. As you can see, this model's actually not to scale. It's coming in paper space. Um, it was actually a paper space drawing that I actually put in there. Okay, so it's 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 out of scale. Oops. So we can start to put, as I say, our dimensions in there. It's also giving me information at the bottom there on that distance bar of exactly what I've got measured up as well. So we've got other things in there: area, radius, angular. Yeah, so I could I can actually put an angular dimension in. So we wanted to see what that angle was. We can actually 
be as accurate or as inaccurate as we want. Let's just snap that to there, snap that back to there, so we can actually get our measurements in. Um, one of the thing, tools that I do like is we actually have this um, tool called um, Quick Measure. Um, and Quick Measure will actually just allow me to click anywhere and it will then start to put dimensions around any object. So it'll give me angles, it'll give me distances, um, and it basically just allows me to very quickly um, pick up dimensions and get information straight out of this model. So quite nice little tools in there as well. Um, the other things we've got, if I, if I pull this um, fly out in, yeah, we've got the ability to switch between um, model space and paper space. So if I was actually want to, I can go to a layout tab. Um, there's layout too. So we can work actually directly in the layout, um, or we've got the model in there. If you've uploaded a drawing that's got multiple tabs, then that's where we're going to be able to access it as well. We also have the ability to go to 3D wireframe or 3D solid. So if you've uploaded um, a 3D DWG, then we can start to manipulate that and view that as well. Okay. Um, we also have a properties box as well. So if I select any object, um, so if I select, um, if I selected an object first, let's go select, and I select that object. We have then have the properties of the item that's in there. So we can start to see layer information, whether it's laid by colour, what layer that happens to be on. So we could actually then move that layer so we can start to move objects across as well. So we've got some quite powerful tools for editing where these objects actually are in there. And then at the end there, we've actually got this share option. So I can actually turn my snaps on and off. And we can also start to look at the snap modes. So almost like you'd find within the full version of AutoCAD, we've got the ability to be able to, to come into here and start to turn on and off snaps that we don't actually want to be, to be snapping to. Uh, we've got ortho mode as well, which is very, very useful as well. We've also got the ability to change the drawing units in the settings as well. The other thing I can do is if I just close, come out of that drawing a second, um, we can actually choose whether or not, um, sorry about that, let's just relaunch that, relaunch the app. What we've also got the ability to do is choose to have a drawing available offline as well. So what we can do is, um, if I actually go to the information about this office plan, I can choose there. So it's download to offline. So I can actually have that to work offline. And when I actually open that, it has actually now pulled that off to, so I can use it offline. You'll notice it's got a little green arrow. That's to indicate that it's actually sat um, on my iPad. When I'm back in the office, it will sync. So it means that it's syncing at the moment because I'm currently connected to the network. But it also means that if I did lose my connection, it's still going to be available for me. So it's quite a nice little tool is that. Okay. Um, what we'll do is I'm just going to start in here, um, hit the plus button. And I, as you see here, I can create new subfolders. I can connect to my different storage devices that are storage options that I've got um, on here. Or what I can also do is I can go create a new drawing. And that's what I'm going to do. So I can create a new drawing. I can give that um, join a name, so we'll just call it um, AutoCAD 360 Demo, okay, and I'll create this drawing. So it'll now create a blank drawing for me. Um, file with that name already exists, that's good, so we'll call it that, we'll be number two at the end then, okay. Um, so we can create that drawing, and it'll create that on my A360 drive. Okay. And then it'll set up my workspace. So it'll now create all the workspaces that it needs, um, the basic layers information, and basically set that drawing up. Um, the reason why it's taking a bit of time, because of course it is synchronizing at the moment um, with the internet. So it's just um, having to go for our Wi-Fi. We'll give it a chance. It'll do the same as it did before. It'll get to 38%. It'll think about it for a little bit, and then suddenly hit 100, and we'll be we'll be in and working. So here we go. Look. So now I have a completely blank drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to draw, and I can draw lines. I can draw rectangles. So let's just choose a rectangle, and I can basically put a rectangle in there. It's going to give me my 
width and length option in here. So I actually want this room to be um, six meters by uh, three and a half meters. Click OK. And what we'll have in there is our rectangle. So I can zoom in. Let's just zoom that. OK. So there's our, our, our rectangle. Um, I can then start to do various things like I can select this rectangle. Um, and then I can start to look at some of the tools. So we can edit the vertices. So I can start to edit the corners. I could copy it. Um, I could change the colors. I can move it. I could scale it. Um, I can also offset it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to offset that. I can pull that out. I can click on the value. I want to offset that by 150. Done. And it starts to do that. We can also then start to... Um, if I draw other objects in there, so I want to draw a circle, and I want it to snap to that corner. I can drag that out. And again, let's just delete that, and I want that to be a one meter radius. Yeah, done. We can then also start to look at trimming. So whenever I select an object, so hit the select button, select to modify, You'll notice in here at the end, we also have the ability to trim. Yeah, so I can then choose the lines that I then want to trim back out of there. So that's quite a useful little tool. It works quite intuitively when you get used to how that works. So we've got the trim, we've got the extend tools in there as well. Um, I mentioned that one of my favorite tools was the, the, the ability to actually draw shapes using the quick draw. So we've actually got this um, smart pen. So the smart pen now, if I actually start to draw using my finger, will understand what it is that I'm trying to create. I can then select these dimensions, um, and we can then start to change these to whatever we need them to be. So I can click into both of them and specify. There we go. Yeah, so we can start to put in our dimensions. Um, it works quite nice on circles as well. So if I actually draw a circle, it actually understands that that's what I'm trying to do. So if you were using a stylus or something in that fashion, then we can very easily put in our values. So these things can be quite quick. Um, once we've done that as well, if I do select that object, I might want to move that. So I can actually choose then to move that. Yeah. And we get these quite intelligent snaps. Yeah. So oops, let's um, do that again. So move and there we go. Yeah. So there's the move tool, and I can choose a different command or go back to select as well. So the tools in here are quite flexible, and we can carry on with the GPS tool. Um, which allow me to set my location. I'm not going to do that because I'm actually um, in one of our meeting rooms at the moment, so my GPS is going to be restrictive anyway. Um, but we can actually go in and we can start to set the drawing coordinates. So that's very useful. And as I say, if you're on site and you're actually on the site with a georeference drawing, we can then actually walk into that, which is very, very useful indeed. Um, we've got the uh, an obligatory annotate tool, so we can actually then cloud, we can insert photos, can put arrows in, yeah. So uh, maybe not that way. Point, put another arrow in, yeah. If you want to delete an item, again, I can do use this smart arrays. Um, so if I go quick delete, you can actually just go over an object. Um, if you wanted to, there is another way of deleting items as well by selecting them. But the Quick delete is very useful, so anything, but it understands the, the makeup of the object that's there. So that will actually then quite happily draw that up. Okay, so all of this work that I'm doing at the moment is eventually will be synchronized back to the cloud. Um, and then when I'm back in the office, I can open up that, that drawing directly into AutoCAD. And then we can take it further, so we're not actually losing this data in the process. Um, they are not millions of tools in here. It's to give us the basic tools that we need to edit um, and make quick review changes. It's not designed to replace your AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT. It is a way of enhancing 
the tools that you already have within AutoCAD and AutoCAD DLT to actually get you um, out and onto site. Um, overall, it's a really nice little application. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, it even comes with uh, tutorials in there as well. So we've got the design feed where we can start to put the information in that we want as well. So we can tag people into that drawing as well. Currently, it is available, as I say, on the Apple, on the iStore, on the Apple Store, and also in the Google Play Store as well. Um, if you download the, the basic version, it does come with a 30-day trial of um, AutoDesk 360 Pro. Um, so I highly recommend that if you want to have a play, download that and, um, and, and see for yourself how this functionality works. It's quite a nice, gets a bit of use, get, getting used to with the multi-touch gestures. Um, but once you've got your head around that, it's a really, really useful little app. Okay, so I've got a few questions coming in. Um, is there an undo function? Yes, there is. So just on the top um, of my screen there, we've actually got the undo as well. So you've got your undo, redo, and then you also have up there the export. So that's where I can create direct PDF. Um, you'll also notice that what I've got in there is the ability to share it. And also, if, you, if anyone out there uses Evernote, you can also publish it direct to Evernote as well. There's also a full screen mode as well. Um, so especially for reviewing where we can actually get that up as well. So really, really useful little app. Um, not a million features, but I highly recommend that you, you have a play with that. Um, if anyone's got any questions, um, just um, drop them in now and I'll try and answer them. So can we use A360 in Revit? Yes, you can. So A360 um, is the same cloud storage space that you can actually use from Revit. So you can actually store any drawing in e in the A360 space direct in Revit and share it that way as well. There's also um, a product which I, I did a webinar on this morning which will be published soon called A360 Collaboration for Revit. Um, that actually allows for, for multi-site um, work sharing. Um, it's a chargeable function, um, but it would allow you to share across multiple sites. Um, yes, this, and the um, when you actually are working in it, um, all your changes are saved automatically. So as soon as I exit out of that, um, that's how them set changes are saved. Um, if I go back into that drawing, um, it'll really open that drawing up, but all the changes are automatically saved, and they're automatically synced as well. What it does do, though, and which is quite nice, particularly if you ended up with a conflict where, say, for instance, someone opened that drawing in AutoCAD from the 360 cloud whilst you were working offline, and they made changes to it, when you actually then, um, when you actually then save your drawing back, it will then save a version. So if you open the AutoCAD and look at the versions, you'll find that there's two versions in there to make sure that we, we, we don't actually get problems. Um, can we view individual sheets in Revit? Um, yes, from the, A from the A360 collaboration, we can share individual sheets um, to A360. Um, so there's different ways of actually doing that from there as well. Cool. So, so thank you very much for joining me um, for a short half-hour webinar this, this afternoon. Um, as I say, if you've got any other questions, do log them. I get an email with everyone's name and any other questions that have actually been added. Um, go away, have a play, uh, and see how you get on. So thank you very much for your time this afternoon, um, and have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you.